Great! Once more into the mansion! Part of me hopes we'll be done with it by the end of this clip, and considering the amount of fast-forward I'm gonna be doing, that's a pretty safe hope. But I'm not sure I've got money on it, since the occasional wild wheezing is strong enough to be owned by one of the gym leaders we dealt with before surfing to this island. Well, at least this wheezing isn't throwing sludges that are quite as deadly as the ones that left me a bit shaken in the last clip. Great. Even as basic as this environment is, I'm getting lost in it. At least when I get lost in the Metroid games, it feels more understandable considering the complexity of the mazes and the sheer number of tools we have to grab over the course of the game. Here? Yeah? It just feels embarrassing since at best, it's just occasionally flip a switch then walk through. Okay, not as many hidden items as I thought in here. Again, kind of wish there was some manner of warning about when we're gonna deal with another enemy. And I very much wish there was some measure of in-universe reason for us to fight against all these Pokémon outside of just they showed up while we were walking in a supposedly abandoned building. Again, I'm personally interested enough to keep pushing forward, but that doesn't change the fact that it's hard for me to be all that personally invested in our player character's successes or trials here. It's kinda odd how that works out. Well, at least it looks like we're close to grabbing something relatively fresh, even if that item probably isn't going to be especially uh, useful to us here. Literally, the only reason we're in here is to grab a key to open the door to the next Pokémon gym. Eh, just like the only reason we went to the rocket base was to get a Sylph Scope to let us finish with the Lavender Tower, which we needed to get the Pokémon flute to get by the two Snorlaxes. At least this, eh, there are fewer steps along the way. Was your mentor Dr. Fuji, or was it some unnamed scientist? Again, really wish there was more motivation for us to go through these various dungeons and other hostile areas than this is between you and the next location you need to go to. This is a game with quite a lot of dialogue written for the characters, so why not devote more of that text to having some actual story as we go from town to town and gain badge after badge? Right, that makes 113 for Koaku so far. He's literally got more trainer wins than he has health at this point. And 
And that does it for another trainer. Overall, the team has 740 wins. The way he worded that just felt kind of funny. Partly the fact that he didn't specify where we should jump, partly because I imagined his tone as being a bit bitter since he just lost to us, and who hasn't told someone to jump out a window or to go away with varying amounts of venom? There we go, that was the right place to jump. Funny, it looks like there's plenty of people in this building from what we've been seeing, granted. Not as many people as I expect will be in the gym, though I could be wrong. But it's not like there were any means to prevent random people from walking into this badly damaged building. Not that we're seeing much damage, given the graphics. And again, this is the only way we have to enter the gym. Which should have been a building we should have been able to enter at any time we pleased. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to level 43 here, uh, Kawaku. Considering we've been seeing some level 40 wheezings in here, fighting a level 29 one in the same building just feels insulting. Yeah, that earthquake was probably obscenely overkill. Yeah, ouch is one word for it. Of course you don't, because we need to make things just a little more troublesome for the player as we keep making progress. I'm not even sure if I figured out we needed the key to this building the first time I played this as a kid. I just knew I couldn't enter the gym, and this was the only building with trainers I could get into. At least we didn't have to deal with anything in a completely different town in order to complete this dungeon. I'm not even sure calling it a dungeon is entirely accurate, even if there are plenty of random encounters and some switching to, uh, turn on some doors or something. Seriously, it's very bare bones here. Indeed he is, and he's apparently equal in strength to what's essentially a low-level god, Rayquaza. So credit where it's due, these poor idiots managed to make something massively powerful, probably beyond the scope they were actually aiming for. That's the biggest issue with playing god, really. Sometimes, you just do it way too well and accidentally fuck yourself. And great. Now I kinda want to be uh, LPing Resident Evil or Parasite Eve instead of Pokemon, since they would actually focus on that kind of horror story. Whereas this game just mentions that something interesting happened, but doesn't actually let us see it in any way, shape, or form. Granted, it was a pretty solid opening to the first Pokemon movie, but we're not watching that movie right now. We're playing the first handheld game and its console add-on, where we don't actually get any focus on Mewtwo. We have no reason to go after Mewtwo other than to try to complete the Pokedex, and he's going to be sitting in a cave in Cerulean that won't open up until after the credits roll. Now, if this game actually had a story, then maybe I'd be interested in seeing what how they expand on it in the post-game. But things are so bare-bones in the main game that going into Cerulean Cave is about as likely as me entering the power plant. Again, that's a damn shame since some of the most powerful Pokemon that I enjoy in the entire franchise are two of the legendary birds and Mewtwo. But again, 
We have no narrative reason to do so, because there doesn't seem to be much of any narrative at all here. Great! Wasn't expecting this building to be such a target-rich environment for Neo, since I only remembered the fire types, not the poisons in here. Rather surprising, considering the poison types in this place are more dangerous than the fire types. Hell, why are the fire types treated like this in the only part of this region where there's more than just some fire puppies wandering around? While I'm at it, while I understand why there aren't any Charmanders or Charmeleons wandering around here, you'd think we'd see more than Ponytas and Growliths. Can we get a Magmar or two for uh, the sake of... Uh, visual variety. I mean, I know Vulpix is uh, in blue, not red, but eh. Seriously, water types have always been absurdly more common than fire, but come on here. I'm pretty sure that part of the starter triangle could have used some more love in this game. Ah, well. At least Blaine is the second to last gym leader, so he's gonna have higher level Pokemon than the others we've faced so far. That's gotta mean something. Right, that's 113 for Marbleback. Hey, you're the one who started that battle. It's not my fault you couldn't win. I'd ask what you're studying, but it's hard to care. Let's just keep on searching for the key we need. Then forget about this mansion just like the rocket base, Silk Tower, and Lavender Tower. It's just so right amazing how many locations we've been to, and how few of them in any way feel actually memorable. <laughs> so close to the key, but with Marbleback poisoned, yeah, we've got to leave. Wish I could say that's frustrating, but I just can't find it in me to do so. I'm trying to remember if this is the first time we've used the escape road, or if there were other moments of that uh, being used in this game so far. Here's hoping I both remember how to get where we left off, and that we don't end up poisoned or burned on our way back there. Sure, we aren't in any hurry since there's no time limit, but still, we've spent more than enough time in here and there's not much left to see in this building. And I severely doubt we're gonna need this much more grinding before we deal with Blaine. Especially since there's gonna be plenty of trainers in his gym once we get that door unlocked. Again? Really wish I could actually care that we're leveling up after so many battles. Place your bets. Will Takanabori level up here before we're done? I should probably be disturbed that a wild Pokémon is as strong as our highest scoring Pokémon. But again, I just find it strange that so many trainers in here are less capable than the wild Pokémon, when everywhere before now, that was not the case.
Oh, for God's sakes, let me figure out where the statue on this floor is again! Again? Wish I could tell when we're gonna get another random encounter, even if that takes part of the point out of random. But it feels like there's some variable rate where we get em ambushed as we walk. Sometimes it's just a bare few steps, and other times we're allowed to go quite a distance without any trouble at all. Oh, <coughs> you've gotta be kidding me! We didn't even take enough steps to activate the poison in the overworld there! Am I just unlucky in this clip? Or is the game trying to make me pay for saying things it's gotten too easy this far in? Bloody hell, sorry Taki, we're gonna keep on pushing forward despite your poison. Another move that looks cool on paper but didn't really measure up. And now that we've got the key, time to say goodbye to this mansion for good. Eh, wonder how many more times I'm gonna feel the need to use the escape ropes we've managed to get so far in the game.